This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to install and set up the UCS Reaper renaming tool I've been working on to help integrate the universal category system with Reaper. Let's get started. Before you can use the tool, you'll need to have Reapac installed. If you don't already, go to reapac.com, R-E-A-P-A-C-K.com and install it. After installation, under the extensions menu, you'll see Reapac. From there, click Import Repositories and you'll be prompted with a dialog box. Paste in the URL to my GitHub, which I'll be linking below, and then click OK, and you will download the tool, along with a number of other scripts I've written for Reaper. If you scroll down, you will see the UCS renaming tool here, which means it was downloaded successfully. Now, unlike most traditional RIA scripts, this tool was built largely using HTML and JavaScript. It's a web-based tool that you can access directly from any web browser, and you can save it like a bookmark in your web browser and access it any time that you have Reaper open. To set up this web interface, you'll need to use the web interfaces menu in Reaper. Go to Option, Preferences, and scroll down in the Preferences window to Control OSC slash web. Click Add, and change your control surface mode to web browser interface. This web interface will be running on a local port, and if you are already using port 8080, you'll probably need to change it to something like 8081, 8082, whatever you want. Under default interface, you'll see the UCS renaming tool and UCS renaming tool dark. There's two different versions of the tool that are both identical, one is just a light mode and one is a dark mode, and I'll demonstrate both and you can pick whichever one you prefer. From there, I recommend using the rc.reaper.fm and an ID like UCS Lite to generate a URL that you can just access directly through your web browser. Copy that URL and click OK. From there, you'll need to open up your web browser and paste in that URL. You'll be taken to this page that indicates you're successful, and you can just save this page as a bookmark so you can easily access it whenever you have Reaper open. After that, click the URL and you'll be taken directly to the tool. Here's a demonstration of what the dark mode of the site looks like versus the light mode. They do the exact same thing again, but some people prefer dark mode, so I've got that set up for you. The tool is broken up into three main parts. There's a naming section, a processing section, and the actual UCS data table. The data table has two different modes. It can operate in either online mode or in offline mode. If you're going to be working offline, I recommend setting that up, and you can do so by simply clicking the download button and following the instructions that appear and placing UCS.txt where the hierarchy suggests you place it. Otherwise, you can stick with using online mode, which pulls from a Google Sheet to get all of this data whenever you load the site. Let's take a quick look at how this tool actually works in practice. In my Reaper project, I've got a number of glitchy sci-fi sort of sounds, and let's see if we can find something appropriate. In the tool, if you scroll to the bottom, you can filter the data table for relevant information. So let's try looking for glitch. And look, there is a user interface sound for glitches and it has a cat ID of UI glitch. To narrow down this information, in the category section of naming, we'll start typing and see that user interface comes up. Whenever you select your category, the subcategories below will autofill appropriately with whatever options are available to you in the category you selected. We'll click that. User category is often used for things like interior versus exterior sounds, and in this case, I'm not really too worried about that, and we'll refrain from using it. For file name, let's go with something like warp, sci-fi, alien, starship, sure. Beneath this, you'll see that there's a variation number which will be appended and incremented automatically. So if you name your file with 10, it'll start counting up from 10. For creator ID, we'll go with my initials, which are AACE for Aaron Senden. For source ID, we'll go with our project, and in this case, let's say I'm working on the next aliens title, so we'll call it Alan. For user data and notes, we can put in things like microphones, perspectives, locations, or other, but I'll refrain from doing that too because it's also optional. 
The next section is interesting because the processing determines what items in your Reaper project are renamed. We can choose to do either regions, markers, media items, or tracks. Let's go with tracks. We can do either the selected tracks or all tracks. Let's go with the selected tracks. So I'll select three tracks, open up the tool again, and click Submit. You'll see in my Reaper project, these three tracks have been renamed. If we open up the track manager, you'll see that their values increment up from 10, 11, 12 based on the name, based on the number we ended with in our file name here. And that's pretty much it. From there, you can use it on your selected media items. You can use it on regions. You can do whatever you want with the tool and enjoy.